remember San Francisco, and I love it to this day. We all grew up there and were happy. I remember our comfortable old house on Steiner Street, which always smelled of soap or flowers or freshly baked bread. And the aunts and cousins and neighbors who were always in and out of our kitchen, visiting and gossiping. And I remember my family in those days. My little sister Dagmar, my big brother Nels, and of course, Papa. But most of all, when I think back to those days, most of all, I remember Mama. And I remember young T.R. Ryan, the family rebel, who, like all little boys, distrusted innovation, especially when it looked like this. Chewie consistently pounded Elle's body until the ladder beat. One, two. No. Mama, I'll just die if T.R. lies to me. T.R. will not lie, and you will not die. But not saying anything is just as good as lying. Maybe you forgot. I hope so. Honestly, it's such a responsibility being a stepmother. I don't know how you ever stood it with three of us. Marta, you got any milk for a couple of growing men? Yeah, sure. Then, how did you fight today, champ? I lost a split decision. <laughs> but we cannot win them all. Uh, yeah. T.R.? You'll never guess who I ran into in the butcher shop this morning. Your arithmetic teacher, Mrs. Stouffer. Yeah? It was quite embarrassing, T.R. It was? Aren't you going to ask me why? I think I know why. I'm sorry I forgot to show you her note, Catherine. Would you get it for me now, please? Well, I can't. I sort of lost it on the cable car by accident. You lost it? You see, it happened like this. I was leaning out the window with the note in my hand. And a big and... wind came along. Never mind. Did you happen to read the note? Well, I sort of glanced at it. What did it say, T.R.? It said, Dear Mrs. Ryan, I am writing to you in regard to your son, T.R. His work in the last month has been slowly deteriorating. Deteriorating, you mean? Well, I guess so. I cannot understand why this is so, Mrs. Ryan, because T.R. is a boy of more than average intelligence. My opinion is that he is not applying himself with the diligence of which he is capable. I suggest that he devote one hour a day to additional study. Your obedient servant, Mrs. Amelia Stouffer. Well, I'm glad you just happened to glance at it. Arithmetic teachers. Why, my cousin Axel could not add two and two in school without it coming out five, and now he's a big accountant and he can add figures by the millions. Well, I don't care about him, but I'm as good as anybody in arithmetic. I'll show you. Give me an example, somebody. Here. Add my grocery list. <laughs> oh, that's too easy. Give me something hard like, mm -hmm. like multiplying fractions. That's what we're up to now. All right, I have a problem for you. But make sure it's hard, Mr. Hanson. Oh, this is so hard, I don't think even I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Now, the boy knows his work. What is the matter with that, Mrs. Stouffer? Yeah, I know my work. She just has a grudge against me. T.R., she's not that kind of a teacher. I had her when I was in school. She's strict, but fair. Only to girls. She hates boys. And anyway, it's her fault that I don't do better. Her hand shakes and she writes on the blackboard. The numbers come out all funny. The fours look like sevens. The twos look like threes. How do you expect anybody to get the right answer? T.R., do you mean to say that you can do the problems from the book, but you can't do it when she writes it on the blackboard? Oh, I don't know. Do we have to talk about it now? It's Saturday afternoon. I got other things to do. I'm going to write to my father. Gosh, you're always picking on me. Well, what did you expect? <laughs> 
You jump on the boy about a note from school your minute he comes in. Mama, did I jump on T.R.? No, Catherine did not jump on him. I now. think I know what it is. It has all to do with blackboard. Yeah, the blackboard. Th that's what the boy said, the teacher's handshake. Oh, Papa, her hand is as steady as mine is. And this isn't the first I've heard this blackboard business. Do you remember T.R.'s last report card? He almost failed geography. When I asked him why, he said it was because he couldn't read the maps the teacher drew on the blackboard. I remember. And then there was English. He got B-plus in all his compositions and failed the oral vocabulary. But now, how could a little boy understand oral vocabulary? Mama, I think I know what it is. T.R. needs glasses. Glasses? T.R.? He's probably a little bit nearsighted. Oh, that is silly. No, it is not so silly, Lars. Catherine could be right. I have noticed sometimes that he looks like this. Martha, he does not look like this. His eyes are big and bright and blue, and they say, you're just as good as you or me. Well, I'm not so sure, Papa, and I'm going to take him down to see Dr. Prager right away. That is just nonsense. Mom, I can't do it. How can I tell T.R. he needs glasses? You want me to talk to him? Oh, would you? I, I don't want him to hate me. All right, Catherine. Running to my father. Oh, that is nice. Oh, it is hard to have him so far in more ways than one. Catherine has to be both Mama and Papa to you, and she has not had much experience being either. Mmm, sugar has gone up so. Me, I am used to being a mama. I've been one for over 20 years. But I always started with the little babies, and Catherine started with a 10-year-old son the minute she married your papa. <laughs> so she worries sometimes. Did not order canned beets. See, uh, would you see if the grocer added this right? Sure, Mrs. Hanson. Catherine doesn't have to worry. I promised I'd study more. Oh, Catherine thinks she was smart enough. It is only that uh, she thinks the trouble may be uh, that you cannot see the blackboard so good. And she thinks, well, well only thinks, mind you, that uh, maybe you need glasses. Glasses? Me? I don't need glasses, Mrs. Hanson. Honest, I can see perfect. Good. Then be telling that to Dr. Prager tomorrow when we see him. Oh, I don't want to go to a doctor. I'm not sick. Oh, he is not a medicine doctor, T.R. He is an eyeglasses doctor. I won't go. Oh. My eyes are as good as anybody's. I'll show you. Better. We go see Dr. Prager tomorrow, yeah. E? No, not an E. Uh, F? Yeah, F. Uh, D? No, P. Or is it a Z? Um, F? L, no, not an L, um, R, S, V, O, B, uh, uh, E, or is it an F? Uh. Yeah, suppose we try these lenses. Yeah. 
isn't fair. If you wouldn't have put that darn castor oil in my eyes, I could have seen fine. Just try to read the next line. F, X, B, C, M. No, not an M. A C? Or is it a Q? Darn that oil. Well, let's try these lenses. These should be just right. I don't care. I won't wear them anyhow. You? Yeah. Yeah, you're behaving like a child. I am a child, and children don't wear glasses. They do if they need them. I'm crazy about men with glasses. They're so, so different looking. I don't want to look different. But T.R., it'll give you a very intelligent look. I look intelligent enough for my age. But you don't have to wear them all the time. Dr. Prager said you're just a little bit nearsighted. You'll only need them for distances like scouting or exploring. And what if I want to play baseball? You don't play baseball. You've said you hate baseball. Maybe I'll begin to like it. Ah, uh, who likes baseball? You and I, we like prize fighting. I would like to see Ty Cobb get in the same ring with Benny Leonard, and we see who wins. I can't fight with glasses. You do not need glasses in the ring. The other one is right there in front of you. There's not one kid I know that wears them. Well, Freddie Lewis wears braces on his teeth. And they call him horse face. See? Dang. Well, I think horse face is worse than four eyes. Four eyes. That's what they'll be calling me. Dagma. I only meant... Never mind. And if they say that, you just say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Now, come on, Tia. At least try them on. I'll bet Mrs. Wilson never had this trouble with her boy. What class is he in? Oh, he is not in school. Uh, he is just the president of the United States, Mr. Woodrow Wilson. But he wore glasses when he was a boy. Oh, but that was in the olden days. Kids were different then. Well, take the man that you were named for, Teddy Roosevelt. He also wore glasses when he was a boy. There you go with your presidents again, Miss Sanson. I don't want to look like a president. Tia, the body is always changing. Soon you will grow a beard. And then the only thing to do is to get out the razor and shave it off, unless you want to look like Santa Claus. <laughs> Take Aunt Yenny, for instance. When she had that trouble with the teeth, and the dentist told her she would have to have them out, did she complain? Golly, did she. Dagma. Well, what I mean is, even though she complained, she still had them pulled. Yeah, exactly. And take me. Martha, remember when I fell off the ladder and broke my leg? Yeah. I had to walk with the crutches for three months. Now, I did not say to the doctor, Doctor, I will not walk with crutches. No. What I'm trying to say to you is, there is nothing to be ashamed of to use all the help you need. Yar! That's Mickey. Can I be excused, Captain? Roll along, T.R. <sighs> Come on, Nick. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't care anything you want to do. Well, I don't have anything special to do. Hey, what are them? Glasses. Ain't you ever seen glasses before? When did you get them? Yesterday. How come you need glasses? I don't. It's that crazy old Mrs. Stouffer. What's she got to do with it? Nothing. Can I try them? Sure. They're not really glasses. There's practically no lenses in there at all. Makes everything look funny. You must have real bad eyes. You take that back. What'd I say? My eyes are as good as yours any time. I don't have to wear them if I don't want to. Well, then don't. But I will wear them if I want to. Go ahead, say it again. Say I look funny in them. I didn't say it before. Yes, you did. I did it. You did. Don't push me. If you don't like being pushed, don't come around my house. Okay, I won't. Then don't. Where I lost 
ghosts and catch them. But I remember I had them in my back pocket when I went to school yesterday. And when, and when you got to school, they were gone. That's right, gone. I looked up and down the street catching. I couldn't find them. That it is T.R. that lost them, Dagma. He should be the one to look for them. Oh, I did, Mrs. Hanson. But if you want me to look again... Never mind, T.R. I really don't think you'll find them. No, neither do I. You know, I think some pickpocket stole them. Yeah, it could be. I read in the paper there's a big crime wave in San Francisco. A body isn't safe on the street nowadays. Huh? With criminals stealing glasses and everything. Honestly. I'll tell you what, Catherine. I'll get a job down at the grocery store delivering orders after school. And when I've saved enough money, in six or seven months, I'll get myself a pair of glasses. There's no rush. What's six or seven months? Go do your homework, P.R. Sure. I wish I knew where he hid them. Has to pickpocket. Mama, it's not funny. T.R.'s got to wear those glasses. <laughs> he is smart, all right, Catherine, but he is only a little boy. I think I am smarter. I am going to call your papa and tell him to go down after work to Dr. Prager's and get him a second pair. Now, it will be our present. Mama, he'll only lose those two. Well, then maybe we get him the pinch nose, but the ribbon. <laughs> I did not get them, Martha. Dr. Prager said to give the boy another day or two to find them. That all boys are like this and not to worry. Hello? This is Dr. Prager, Mrs. Hansen. Your husband was in to see me a little while ago, and he forgot his glasses. What glasses? No. Oh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. Lots. Master, I do not want to hear a word. Not one word. Lars Hansen. That man is a faker, Martha, a crack. What happened? It's all T.R.'s fault. What did I do now? Well, you've lost your glasses, that's what you did. And I went down to Dr. Preggers to get you a new pair, and we were talking about this and that, and he says to me, oh, that man is so sneaky, Martha. He says to me, Mr. Hansen, how do you like my new eye shot? And before I know what is happening, he slaps his hand over my left eye and says, now read the numbers. And I did, Martha, perfect, too, but he was not satisfied. Oh, no. He puts drops in my eyes so I cannot see a thing, and then he says, now read them again. It's all your fault, dear. <laughs> My father didn't wear glasses, and he lived to 87. And my grandfather didn't wear glasses either, and he lived till 90. So does it not stand to reason that it runs in the family? Sure it does, Mr. Hansen. How smart is that, Dr. Prager? He does not even have a medical degree. An eyeglasses salesman, that's all he is. That's what I say. Hello, T.R. Oh, hello, Martin. Oh. I will take them, Martha, but I will not wear them. That's right, Mr. Hansen. Is Papa wearing the glasses? He is wearing them in his pocket. It's not like Papa. It is exactly like Papa. He's probably telling T.R. right now how his father did not wear glasses, nor his father before him. Nor his father either. Lars, 
Uh, now, is... Marta. Um... I am too young to be a widow. What are you talking about, Marta? But Dr. Prager said that one day you will be working on a building and you will not see the scaffold and down you will come tumbling like Humpty Dumpty. Oh, so Dr. Prager is not only an eye doctor, he is also a fortune teller, Dr. Prager. Dr. Prager has more diplomas on his wall than Thomas Edison. And if you do not trust him, then you are just blind. Oh, so now I am blind, eh? Mama didn't mean... I know what your mama meant. First he sells me glasses for seeing close. Then he will sell me glasses for seeing far. And after that he will sell me glasses just for seeing. Oh, Papa. You want to see something really funny, Katrin? Look. I think you look beautiful, Lars. Well, I am not Francis X. Bushman. You are handsomer. Hmm? You are, Papa. All right, Martha. I will wear them. Just for you. Oh, wait. Um, I do not want you to wear them yet. Martha, but, Mommy, what is the matter with you? Listen. I saw the nail. You think my eyes are so bad I cannot see the nail? I'm just nervous, that is all. All this eyeglasses business. Got a headache? Uh, yeah, I always get a headache when I am nervous. Maybe it's from, from your eyes. That's what Mrs. Hansen thinks, but we know better, yeah? Sure we do, Mr. Hansen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Gosh, did you hurt yourself? Uh, no, just my leg. Didn't you see the toolbox? Uh, well, I do not have to see the toolbox. I knew it was there. Gosh, maybe you should wear the glasses. Oh, so you are turning against me, too. Oh, no, I'm not, Mr. Hanson. It's only... Gee, if you can't see a toolbox. Please explain something to me, Tia. Why is it that all of a sudden I am an old man wearing glasses? Well, I'm not an old man, and I have to wear them. Oh, yeah, but you are not wearing yours. You are lucky you lost yours. Maybe tonight, after certain people go to bed, I will lose mine, too. Gee, Mr. Hanson, I don't understand grown-ups. Don't you remember what you told me about how a fellow has to use all the help he needs? You know what I mean, what you told me. Yeah, maybe you are right, dear. It is easy to give advice. Yeah, maybe I will wear the glasses someday. Someday isn't soon enough. If I had my pair, I'd wear them right now. Yeah, too bad you lost them. Well, what do you know? I found my glasses. Oh, where were they? Under the step. They must have fallen out of my pocket when I jumped oh. off the steps to go to school. How do you like that? I'll tell you what. what? If you wear yours when you're supposed to, I'll wear mine when I'm supposed to. It's a bargain. How do I look? Swell. Oh, you look good, too. I'll go inside and show them. Anything to worry about. I got Mr. Hansen to wear his glasses. You know, Martha, you're not a bad-looking woman. <laughs> 